Hi, this is episode 78 of Crondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. Whether you're a mobile or web developer, the topic of asynchronous method calls has probably come up at some point in your coding journey. So what exactly are asynchronous method calls and why should you care about them? Since technically, that's two questions, let's take them one at a time. In order to understand what they are, it helps to go through an example. Imagine that you're posting a picture to Instagram. If you use Instagram, you know that after you create a post, first, it shows you a loading icon. While your image is being uploaded to Instagram, you can view other posts. Next, if your post is created successfully, it gives you a success message. Lastly, if your post has an error, it says that the photo couldn't be uploaded and it asks you if you want to try it again. Believe it or not, this workflow will teach you everything at a high level that you need to know about asynchronous method calls as a developer. Let's look at the process step by step. During step one, when Instagram shows the loading icon and allows you to view other posts, the app is making what's called an asynchronous request to the Instagram server. It's considered an asynchronous request because it's performing an action, in this case it's uploading a file, while not blocking any other method calls, such as using other parts of the application. In step two, Instagram is sending a response back to the application. When the app sent out the request in step one, it created what's known as a promise. The promise expects some type of response from the server, typically either a success message or an error message. In the case of step two, the promise is ready and waiting to catch the request when it comes back from the server. And since the response contains a success message, Instagram proudly lets the user know that their post is now live and it renders it. In step three, the application needs to know what to do when a failure occurs. Imagine how bad of an experience it'd be if you uploaded an image to Instagram, but it didn't tell you if there was a failure. You wouldn't know if your picture was posted or not. In order to ensure that the user and the application knows when issues arise, the server response in step three would contain an error message. From that point, it'd be the app's job to parse the response and give their user feedback. Typically, it says there was an error that occurred and you need to try to re-upload it again. As a recap, asynchronous method calls are tools you can use to communicate with outside services while not stopping the flow of the application. Typically, asynchronous method calls work with promises, which means that they wait for server responses to confirm that the process completed properly or an error message if there was an issue. So now that you know what asynchronous method calls are, why are they important? Well, let's imagine a world without them. Unlike our streamlined example of Instagram, let's imagine that YouTube, for example, didn't allow for asynchronous method calls. And let's follow that up by imagining that you had thousands of videos to upload to the site. In the dark ages of the web, before asynchronous behavior became popular, this scenario would have been very ugly because the system wouldn't allow you to perform two actions at once. You'd have to go open a new page for each video that you wanted to upload. From there, you'd need to start an upload completely from scratch. Instead of being able to upload multiple files at a time, like YouTube lets you do now, you'd be forced to take days to upload all your videos, and then you'd have to monitor each one of the pages in case an error occurred. Needless to say, this would not make for a good user experience. While I was teaching myself how to build iOS applications, my knowledge of asynchronous method calls really came into play. If you're building mobile applications that communicate with outside servers, a thorough understanding of asynchronous methods is required. I kept this guide very high level. The main reason is because each language and framework has a different configuration for how asynchronous method calls work. In the show notes, I've included some links to some popular frameworks and it'll walk you through how to implement asynchronous method behavior. Behavior. 